Hello and welcome to Dr. Vila Voila Voices, a podcast and YouTube series produced here at ICAM in Ipswich. I interview local residents and people who have worked or lived in Ipswich, past, present, and future. I would like to introduce my guest, Randall. Please let me know your pronouns and any pertinent information about yourself. Yeah, so um, like you said, my name is Randall. I My pronouns are she, her. Um, I grew up in Ipswich. Um, I worked in many places uh, within the community, as a, such as the Ipswich Public Library, the YMCA, very community-oriented places, and most importantly, Ipswich Community Access Media. Um, and I currently work in community access over at Peabody TV. Yes, please tell me more about community access in general. So I'm from Arizona, moved to Ipswich last year, May 2023, and I've never heard of community access. <laughs> and then when I found out, oh, I could be producing my own show, at the expense of the town and meet amazing people and community, I've been blown away. So yes. please tell me more. So, um, yeah, so community access is like a great resource because you're able to get um, accessibility to video equipment, to podcasting equipment, to field equipment, and you get to go out or in studio and tell your story or whatever you're passionate about and talk about it. It's a great platform for you to be creative. Um, community access stations do a lot of uh, programming with adults, but also children. Um, we go out and uh, we record uh, local events, such as like parades, festivals, sporting events. Um, and we also just like our hub for people to create a show like we're doing now, which is a lot of fun. And I'm so happy to be here. Yes, thank you. I've been inspired by your work, not only because I see myself in you, in the fact that um, Maybe you would like to talk about this first. Do you consider yourself a member of the LGBT qua plus community? Because I see myself in you. And what I, why I started this podcast was be, I wasn't seeing myself in this town. I wasn't seeing events or even gay flags around town. <laughs> Where can I go and feel safe? And you immediately made me feel safe. And then when I found out about your work and how you work with all ages like I do as a Suzuki educator, I continuously inspired by you and your work. So if you could talk more about what inspires you in the work itself. Yeah, that's that's very sweet of you to say, because I think what you're doing is very inspiring in creating this platform here in Ipswich, because um, Ipswich hasn't had anything like this before. So I'm so glad that you're here and you found ICAM. But yeah, so currently um, I, I identify as a bisexual woman. Um, I live currently in Salem, Massachusetts, and I work in Peabody. So I have a 10 minute commute now and opposed to my 40 minute one. Um, so yeah, I'm doing a lot with the LGBTQ community in Salem, such as the Hometown Queeros, which is a drag collective of kings, things, and queens. Um, and we just produced a documentary um, back at the end of Pride Month. It was at the Peabody Essex Museum, which was really cool. Um, I work very closely with Miss Diamond Wigfall and Buster Pants to produce their own podcast. And I also work with um, a drag queen out in Lowell, Bossy Boots. So we are doing a lot of queer stuff over in Peabody, which is great. Um, and I also have done a lot of stuff with Nagley too. We just created um, an advertisement for them because um, they haven't had one updated since 2017. And if you don't know, Nagley is a North Shore LGBTQ Youth Association. Um, so they do a lot of hands-on learning with kids and making them comfortable up from the ages of like like uh, 11 to 23, which is really great. Um, so there's like a queer um, adulting program too. So yeah, there's many parts of, I'm so happy that community access, it's not only for your community directly, but it's for like the North Shore community generally. So we're able to give a platform again to all these voices. So I've been I've been really inspired by Miss Diamond Wigfall and the Hometown Queeros because I went to their show two years ago on New Year's for the first time and I was like, whoa, I finally have a space. Mm -hmm. um, and that was over at Bit Bar in Salem and um, I've been going to their shows ever since. So it was just kind of like, I love these people and I wanna do something for them and that kind of you know, escalated. Yeah, in terms of who you mentioned, I agree. So inspiring, Ms. Diamond, the hometown mm -hmm. queeros. If you haven't watched their Kings, Queens and Things? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's uh, the Queens, Kings, and Things of Salem. Um, yeah, the documentary. It's um, on our YouTube. Uh, it's it's on the Peabody TV channel if you uh, live in Peabody, the public channel. Um, but yeah, we're doing like their podcasts are there too. We have like, they're on Spotify and YouTube. Just again, like 
those people are also like so cool and so down to earth and so loving and also just funny Mm -hmm. they're just so funny um and yeah i'm really grateful to know them and inclusive like they are actively wanting members of the community including myself i got to perform alongside at the off cabot yeah it was so fun being able to record you there because we were working on something so it was so fun to have uh you be part of that thank you and what i'm inspired by with you especially is i keep seeing you at all of these events <laughs> and you're one of those including the hometown queeros and ms diamond you're just working so hard and as someone who also feels like the grind is never stopping but i personally get my energy from the more i do how do you get your energy or what keeps you motivated to keep the work going because whenever i see you i could tell randall's working <laughs> randall's working hard and we need more people like you in the community doing the work so Yeah, I think um, what motivates me is uh, collaboration and also just seeing, um, you know, these people who I've been working with just really motivated to give space. And I think that you you should be able to give space, you know, every in all aspects of your life to people, um, personal, professionally. um, And I just think uh, they're providing such a great space of community, one that made me feel belong. So like if I can show other people that community uh, through like video and audio or whatever it is and just be part of their journey in some way and support them, I'm all for it because again, like, uh, you know, I've been going to their show so consistently. I brought my friends to their shows. I brought now my coworkers to the shows to go film and stuff. Um, so we're just like having a lot of fun with them because they are such a fun, safe group. And that's like always a priority to Miss Diamond, Buster, um, Dick Kane, Miss Michael, Maxine Harrison, um, and uh, Pee Wee Vermin. Like that, their, their goal is to create a safe space for all. Mm-hmm. So I'm so glad that I know all of them. Yes, and I've, I've felt those safe spaces and been in those spaces. And I just, I can't wait for the next event. Uh, from the yeah. PEM, the X Shadowcast screening. The X Shadowcast was so good. So, so, so good. Did you ever follow up and watch the other movies? I have not, but I want to watch oh Pearl. Gosh. It's at the top of my watch list. Yeah. Because after seeing X, I was like, I need to know who this character is. I don't think I can ever watch X the same way. <laughs> after like, seeing the Shadowcast. Uh, yeah, because yeah. it was just so good and it was so funny and they're always so clever. They always run such a great bit. Um, so yeah, it's been so fun being able to see you at those events too. And we actually met, um, at Miss Diamond Wigfall's 30th birthday event at the Off Cabot. And we sat right next to each other and we talked. And then the next day you went into the Y where I used to work and you met someone I know. And then I'm so glad that we connected that way. Yes. So you, what I appreciate is you've been making these connections. So I blame you, Randall, for all of this (laughs) because you're the one who connected me here. You used to work here, right? Can you talk more about your work here and how coming from Ipswich High School, right? You graduated Ipswich High School. So how did that work for you? Yeah, so I graduated from Ipswich High School in 2014. And then I went to college for a few years. And I actually didn't start at ICAM until like I interned here in like, uh, ooh, 2016, 2017, I would say. And then um, I just worked and I recorded some government meetings, which were so fun. Um, but it was it was nice because uh, I would always ask Beth, the executive director here, if I could always hop into like a creative project or something, and she would always let me do that. And then I eventually became the production manager. Um, and I'm so happy that Brian has followed me and filled in that position because, um, you know, uh, he also came from a community access background. So I have a lot of love and respect for that. Um, but yeah, so in Ipswich, um, I did um, some projects with uh, the parks and, uh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, Carrie Bates. Recreation and Culture um, Department, Carrie Bates, Recreation Culture. Um, and I did a project with Gordon Harris and uh, he's the historian in town. So yeah, just kind of like slowly ingrained and, you know, trying to get, you know, these people creating shows and creating a platform. So thank you. Been a lot of fun. Yeah. And then and in terms of, I want to bring it to, the work that you've been doing supporting Lichipitaqua Plus community and like seeing yeah. yourself all over the North Shore. How was it like for you? Did you identify as bisexual when you were in high school? How did you feel in the community in that regard? 
Yeah. So I um, actually uh, didn't come out until I was in college. But like when I was in high school, I identified as bisexual, but I didn't really find my community until I was in college and kind of had that independence away from Ipswich. I love Ipswich, but there's like a lot of work that, you know, needs to be done. So I'm so grateful to see, you know, like pride events happening at the beach. Um, um, this show happening at ICAM. Uh, Miss Diamond came here back in August. At the Crane Estate. Yeah, I was there. Crane Estate. <laughs> it was amazing. Or no, it was September. I'm sorry. I have like no <laughs> sense of time. It was like the first week of September. So I'm glad that there's like um, slowly like a queer community building here. Um, but um, yeah, so like growing up in Ipswich, like it really wasn't something that I would say that a lot of people talked about. I feel like I didn't really know anyone who was queer in my class until after we graduated. We and then we were like, story. Yes. yeah, so, <laughs> so, um, I'm happy to see, cause I have sisters who are, um, eight, nine years younger than me and they went through the school system. So I do know that like within the, between the kids, it's more acceptable to talk about and there's some teachers talking about it and supporting it. So, but I do know that like overall, like I, I think we all can do better, um, in supporting our queer community, even if it's in like a super queer, uh, space like Salem, you know, you can just keep building upon that and that inclusivity. Cause there's so much, there's so much. And honestly, for me, like you said, I just didn't know that anyone in my high school was gay. There was one gay out friend that I had, and he was ridiculed and mocked beyond belief. So I was protecting myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to wait until I know I'm in a safe space, which was college for me, too, to finally come out and say, I am gay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, my hometown of Gilbert, Arizona, is very similar to here. Lots of tradition, mm -hmm. lots of... So I, a question I want to ask all my interviewees here on this Voices uh, podcast and YouTube series is when I say the word Ipswich, what is the, what are the words that first come to mind? Ooh, uh, the first words about Ipswich, uh, I don't know, just like for me, um, I have like a lot of respect. Something that Ipswich does really well is really preserving the nature in the area. So um, like I'm very lucky in preserving the history. Um, I, I, I grew up in a beautiful town. Like, there's no doubt about that. So, um, but yeah, I, I guess Ipswich is, um, you know, it, it just has been part of my journey. So, like, I, I feel like there's parts of the community I still identify with, you know, after, uh, you know, when I was in high school and middle school, I hated being from Ipswich. But as why? soon, why? Yeah. Just because I didn't feel like there was like a camaraderie, I guess, um, and a, a sense of community. And I just feel like that has slowly like developed over the past few years, especially. And also like when you're a kid and you come back as an adult and you're working in these community spaces, you're seeing a lot more than through the lens of a like a child or a teenager. So um, yeah, I'm so glad that I was able to work at ICAM and work at a community organization like the the YMCA where like my job was in membership so I was meeting everyone I was the membership director I was meeting everyone all the time so it's so nice to know more stories because I think you know when you're a kid you don't really have um you know or maybe I didn't I will say you didn't have as many opportunities to have those conversations because I think um just the world generally I think it's evolving but like um sometimes we're not always listening, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I'm very grateful to have had those opportunities and kind of get to know Ipswich a little bit more as an adult and see like things happening like Illumination, um, which is happening like it, we're in October. I don't know when this is coming out, but uh, that's happening like this weekend, it happened last weekend. So there's like these great community events that are, you know, ongoing. And I think that's, Ipswich is finding its, its heart and rhythm for sure. Mm -hmm. I like how you touched on Ipswich in regards to keeping its natural beauty, mm -hmm. which is the main draw of what brought me and my family here was Crane Beach, yeah. <laughs> which is beautiful. And it is beautiful. Sit. It's a walk though. My legs are burning by the time I get up that boardwalk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I walk it almost every weekend with my family. Aww. So we enjoy it year round, which is so special. Yeah. And then you brought up the YMCA. So I've been going to the YMCA since we moved here. And th that mm -hmm. is how I met you along the line with yeah. Eliza and I've made so many great connections to the community I that love Eliza. way. Eliza, yeah. She's so she's so quirky and weird and wonderful. And I stay love tuned. her. Stay tuned. Yeah, we're going to bring so her creative. on. She's going to teach me how to paint something. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. I need to need to go over to her house and decoupage something. <laughs> But in regards to like feeling like the conversations just maybe didn't happen when you were yeah. living here, I agree yes. with that because I'm not seeing myself in the spaces and meaning like when I walk into a business, 
I do notice if there's a gay flag up. Mm -hmm. I do notice, oh, there's someone who looks like I can identify with them. And I'm not seeing those people here in Ipswich. Mm -hmm. I'm having to travel to Newburyport or to Salem or to Beverly to feel like, oh, these are my people. These look like my people. And then I mm -hmm. talk to them and I'm like, oh yeah, these are my people. <laughs> not to say I've met so, everyone I've met here in Ipswich has been so kind to yes. me. Yeah. And the ones that you've helped connect me with, I've made such great connections and I can't wait to further those connections here in Ipswich. Mm -hmm. Cause like you said, the tradition, the history, there's so many people here I want to learn from and help take those traditions and bring them to the masses. That is what I'm most passionate about now is offering these open free concerts, events, fairs. I joined, Hell yeah. Yes, we need more <laughs> of that. Like I joined the Ipswich uh, Arts Association. Oh, Cynthia August is amazing. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And I want to bring my drag and my artistry and my music as a American violist with a doctorate mm -hmm. to the community to be like, maybe that kid who's in high school, middle school, will go to those art events and say like, oh, I see myself yeah. in this town. Oh, absolutely. So that's why I've been yeah really motivated about yeah. it. And, 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 you know, it, this is a perfect point. Like the queer community is here. It's all about visibility. Mm -hmm. And I am so happy that you're spearheading some of that. And let's get it going. I'm coming to those shows. I'm going to yes. have my dollars ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy to support you. And I'm so grateful to know you because um, you're already doing so much in regard to getting out there. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so far, it's been a lot of talking to people. It's been slow, like you said, maybe it has to do with the tradition of actually getting those events put on a calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so anyone out there who knows an event space that wants Drag Story Hour, all ages, music, please contact me. Because I've, I've talked mm -hmm. to face to face to a lot of the managers and business owners in town. And they, to my face, they're very cordial and nice um, and very East Coast. Uh, nicety as i've been saying it my family's from massachusetts so i'm used to the people and the culture but in terms of actually putting a date on a calendar and saying okay you're booked <laughs> that has been my struggle yeah so i'm just looking for spaces to offer mm -hmm. libraries churches um bars yeah. and restaurants i know true north has been offering events mm -hmm. and it's yeah i'm hoping to start my own because it's ipswich yeah. So instead of bringing in these other queens that from outside, <laughs> why don't you support a queen who's here? Um, yeah, that seems to be uh, the problem overall, too, um, is, uh, again, there's so much queer community that's local. Let's, let's build that up first mm -hmm. before we are outsourcing. Um, so I'm so glad that you're going into all these businesses that are super diverse, by the way. Yeah. It's not like you're hitting up one scene, like a bar scene or, you know, something like that. You're going into churches and libraries and, you know, um, you know, community oriented organizations and trying to get something going. And I think um, everyone can use a little bit of something of drag, you know, mm -hmm. um, whether it's like, um, you know, full on drag, drag queen or um, doing stuff that you do over the Suzuki school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so. yeah, my work at Suzuki school, it's started a lot of conversations. Mm -hmm. Suzuki is a very traditional rooted in classical music. Um, but it's been interesting. Like, what is drag to me? Drag is just an elevated art form. It's a way for me to tell a story. It's not necessarily even an appearance. Like, to me, this is drag. <laughs> I'm doing drag in my daily life. That's why the separation between Dr. Casey, which is what my students call me, and Dr. Viola Voila, the separation is blurred. Like, I feel like Dr. Viola more and more just in my everyday life, just being my authentic self. Mm -hmm. it, do you view drag in a, a, a certain way or like what is drag to you? Well, I think um, going back to the documentary, like Ms. Diamond like uh, spoke of it like perfectly, like um, doctors are in drag technically. You're going, you know, you're getting out of yourself. You're putting on um, your, a different look of who you are in the world and it's a different perspective of you. So drag is like whatever you want it to be. And I really love that comparison because like when I go into, work in community access like video is always part of my life but like I'm putting on a different face like I got my game face on it's a whole different vibration coming from me than like you know if you were to catch me on the street and um yeah I think that's everyone everyone is doing drag in some way in their life um yeah and we're coming 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 forward um with just like a lot of love and like a lot of authenticity too so mm -hmm. and that's yeah that's what it's about yeah. being being yourself and feeling safe in the space and that's what i'm hoping to create here in ipswich with visibility yeah so um, to kind of turn the tables yeah. to a totally opposite question because sure. <laughs> i've been following your content now since we've uh, 
became connected a few months ago. And Scooby Doo. I want to talk oh to gosh. you about Scooby Doo mm. because my first time in drag was Scooby Doo drag. Was it? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Pandemic 2020. Finished my doctorate. Finally had time to do all of this. Yeah. <laughs> and I was Daphne for my first you were. ever time ah! in drag. Ah, I have to see that. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. I can show you the picture. I've, I think I've since take them <laughs> taken them off of my social media. Yeah. But I could show. I could show you. Um, but oh what God. drew you to Scooby Doo growing up? And I know it's posted in your bio. I even looked this <laughs> morning. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby Doo movie 2002. Yes. <laughs> and the live action yeah. was one of the most overplayed movies in my well, household. Yeah. It's, it's like, um, okay, so like, I guess like the younger origins of Scooby Doo for me is like, it was really my jump start into like kind of horror, to be honest. Like, I'm a big like fan of the horror genre. And so I feel like mysteries, um, people in masks, um, you know, a good scare too. I always loved that as a kid. Um, and I also like, you know, the camaraderie that that group had, that friendship, that was always something that like I really loved. And also there's such like a queer narrative there. Yes. There's such a queer narrative, especially like in the live action movies too. Um, it's all very like um, out of pocket and uh, tongue in cheek. And I really like that. And it, 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 um, it is something that like I have always like deeply loved and have like even put on the cartoons then and it's like a little corny and campy too and I love that and um yeah actually I'm really excited about I decided at the end of um October going into the first week of November I'm actually I already have like a mystery machine tattoo I'm getting another tattoo of the the phantom ghost from Scooby-Doo so I'm excited about that yeah that's gonna be like a good treat myself after getting through October because it's been a busy month and you deserve that yeah yeah. Um, I have yeah. two tattoos, and they were also treat myself tattoos at the end of each of my degrees. Ooh, I love that. And I yeah. never did one for my doctorate. So I'm like, what can I do to myself? Because yeah. it was the pandemic. Oh my <laughs> so gosh. I'm like, what can I do? I need my doctorate tattoo to match. I have F holes, which are from the my mm -hmm. instrument, taking the sketches. And Ooh. I have a scroll here on my oh, shoulder. That's so pretty. So I really want to add something. And yeah I'll, yeah, I'll hit you up for some recommendations. <laughs> See, I've been like um, out of hand with my my tattoo budget. I've just been getting things I like. Like another thing I have is like I have a, a ghost face tattoo. And there's a lot of overlap between like the Scream series and Scooby-Doo too. Mm -hmm. You have Matt Lillard. Um, and there's uh, they've done like crossovers. I don't know if you've seen the uh, Scooby-Doo uh, Cartoon Network trailer. Daphne's making popcorn and Shaggy on the phone is like do you like scooby movies and it's it's super it's super funny it. it's really good yeah. it's like a little advertisement like back in the day and daphne was like drew barrymore it was really good <laughs> it was like my favorite crossover yet so when did it come out um oh i think like in the early 2000s okay, maybe dead. probably the time that like the movie came out yeah but yeah because yeah. you mentioned like horror and scooby doo a particularly yeah. where you're like gateways to like seeing yourself on TV and they were mine too. Mm -hmm. Scooby-Doo cartoon and like Mickey Mouse like camp over the top yeah. Looney Tunes. Oh my gosh, Looney Tunes, yeah. And that slowly I worked was its waking way up for that. to yeah. horror. Yes. So like what was the next jump for you to horror? Because I recently listened to something that said that the reason we identify to horror movies are because the costume. Like the costume, yeah. the sense of mystery or hiding yourself behind a mask. But also it is the one day out of the year that we could go outside and look like however we want and we feel mm -hmm. just like everyone else. And I really oh, related to holiday. that. Yeah, so. it's my favorite holiday. I guess like, um, well, the first like real horror movie that I got into was a Scream series. So it was really that. And I just w have been attracted to more and more camp. Like I love Jennifer's Body. That's yes, like another favorite movie of yeah. mine. Um, I really love the Conjuring movies. I really love this year. I really loved um, Maxine that came out, but I also love the Alien movie. I want to see that. Oh my God, yes. What, so what's good. the newest one called? Romulus. Romulus. I really, heard really it good. was very, very well done, and I've seen all of the other ones and the Predators. Yeah. And yeah, so I've heard. But also, there's like also like a fun queer commentary. Like I remember when like the Babadook came out, yes. and they put it in the LGBTQ category on Netflix. Yes. And I remember that being like such a symbol during like Pride Month and everything and then on top of that uh megan has also become like a queer icon too mm -hmm. um i actually saw her halloween costume in spirit halloween the other day and i was yes. like oh megan costume what are you gonna be for halloween this year do you know um i really uh i was thinking daphne 
but uh, it depends on how much time I have. But I always you could borrow I my always costume. default to Kim Possible because I, I have the outfit in my closet. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I and saw I, the picture you posted yesterday. Was this the jacket too? This, this was the jacket. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but I always have this jacket. But it's just like in my closet, so I'm like, I, I'll just pull it out. So me and just my just set coworker, your phone to the like that. It is. If you text me, it does do that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. If I had my phone near me, I would test that. Yeah. So um yeah so I just love the horror genre and I love that crossover with uh queer um lgbtq it's fantastic yeah oh my goodness yeah we work very similar yeah no I love that (laughs) finding community here in Ipswich what's your favorite horror movie oh my goodness so the one I was traumatized by which is so camp now was Nightmare on Elm Street growing up oh yeah so it was around the same time me and my friends were watching all the scream movies and Mm -hmm. I loved the horror meets camp and my friend was like oh this is similar to scream it is not similar to scream and I was traumatized the bed scene Mm -hmm. where like Johnny Depp's character gets taken under and just the amount of blood I mean the amount of blood is camp, but as a child, seeing that and the fact that he preys on children yeah. in the movie, I was like, too soon. But then I rewatched it uh, like five or ten years ago, and I was like, oh, this is camp. Like the scene where his arms extend 20 feet, yes. and he's like running down, <laughs> chasing them. I recommend yeah. um, there's a queer horror book called It Came From the Closet, and it's a book of like different uh, voices, and they're – talking all about their queer identity that they found in horror and like Friday the 13th was one that was talked about specifically and it was like such a good such a good read and the exorcist was another one Mm -hmm. such a good read it's such a good read I recommend Freddie's character is very gay coded Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I even then I saw myself in that and that's why it's still like it holds a special place in my heart yeah it does talk about nightmare on elm street in the book too it does so oh, yeah yeah to. so you have to you have to i think they're selling it at uh die with your boots on maybe i was just there yeah I should. yeah they, <laughs> they didn't I have think that they much table that. Open, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but i know they do like uh they do book pop-ups too yeah, and that's the cool thing about salem i'm so glad that over in peabody i get to tap into like my own community so i'm very lucky to do that yeah. and maybe to wrap things up a little bit do you have any projects coming up that you're excited about, even if you can't talk fully about them. Yeah, I can't talk fully about it, but like this entire October, I've been burning through a uh, project with the hometown queero. So I feel like I'm, 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 you know, I've been like living the life vicariously through a drag queen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I've been going to all the shoots, all the shows. So we're putting something fun together. Um, and I'm really, again, grateful to work with all of them. There's just so much light and love around those people. So that should be coming out. In the next few months, I don't really know yet, but um, I'm excited. I'm always excited to collaborate with that group. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, if we could cheers to that community yeah. collaboration. Yes. And engaging. Absolutely. I love yes. this mug so much. This by mug the way, this mug is yours. I'm oh straw included. So I can't wait. I, I'll put it right next to my Ms. Diamond mug. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you me. for having me. And I this can't is my wait. First to, podcast. I can't believe so that. Always behind the camera. Always behind the camera. Yeah. But now in front. So yeah. here's to many more future yeah. memories and events. It feels like I've already known you for many more months and years than we have. So I can't wait. I know. I see you so much. Yes. We're very ingrained in each other's lives. <laughs> and every time I see you, I mean, you look like you're working hard. So honestly, if you ever need anything and you see me in the room, Aww. just grab me and be like, I, I will be there. I will be that person for you very yeah. willingly because you are working hard and you are oh my God. you are more of what we need to see yeah. in this world you were yeah. so nice the other night uh there it was like two weeks ago or so at die with your boots on they were doing a show and i came from one event to the other and my crew was already there and i was like trying to catch up with them um because i just wrapped up the other event and you saw me and you were like can i help you carry things like and i was like that's so nice and you were in like full in drag <laughs> yourself and i was like i was like yeah it was just so sweet of you so i wasn't course did embodied that day so i could <laughs> still carry things <laughs> yeah yeah that was a great show too so I, I can't wait to see you in more shows i can't wait to go out and support thank so. you i'm doing my spooky suzuki event tomorrow so we won't be able to but i've been marketing i it. love it and yeah. my keynote speech at um buckingham brown and nickel school which is a very Ooh. traditional private high school in boston as like they they're That's bringing so me awesome. in as their like lgbt speaker so like these are the kinds of gigs i want mm-hmm. so i'm glad that just making connections like i am with how you started all of yeah. this here in Ipswich it's it's working and you're so community oriented too so I really respect that too you're doing it for the purpose of community and I feel like sometimes that can get lost so I appreciate you for that thank you so much <laughs> yeah so nice knowing you I love knowing you yes yeah and we're gonna yeah this isn't yeah. the end I feel this like we're saying end. goodbye 
yeah. So come, yeah, come see Randall behind the camera at every event, literally, yeah. <laughs> in the North Shore. I'm getting my steps in. <laughs> yes, and follow me at Dr. Viola Voila across all social media platforms. Awesome. Oh, Should do you I have social? Yeah, media? please okay. plug yours. Yeah. Um, I guess like if you want to follow me on my personal it's randall.elizabeth but what you should do is go follow peabody tv which is peabody underscore tv on instagram and facebook yes. yeah and yeah, yeah check out doing all a lot those of podcasts stuff. and videos i've been yeah eating them up consuming my content that Can't makes wait me to so happy all. i always love hearing feedback <laughs> and sharing so yeah yeah you're so nice to do all that. the pro you. yeah all the production you've done has been 10 out of 10. Yeah. I can't wait to see more and more come out of here, too. Yes, I love too. ICAM. Yes, thank you again to ICAM, <laughs> the entire team here, and to Diane, my producer. Amazing. Thank you. Diane? <laughs> I'd love to. I, I, I miss working with Diane so much. She's such like a creative oddball and I love her so much. She always had like a funny little bit that I never would have thought of. And I was like, oh, that's genius. Yeah, I haven't. I really had no expectations coming here. And Diane has blown me out of the water every single time yeah. with just the work that she's done. And so quickly and efficiently with a smile. Oh, I love yeah. it here. Yeah, I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Oh, 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 oh,